when I came to Australia, I saw long queues of people waiting for jobs, and that was in 1928. Woody couldn't get work in Melbourne. He tried many places. Well, life was pretty grim. I wasn't interested politically in, at that period. I did all my severe learning in Karimbara. Well, nobody, I think, could uh, realise the spirit of defeatism that was in the trade union movement. Uh, as I say, the waterfront workers were defeated, the timber workers were defeated, the miners were defeated. And uh, the, uh, there was a whole era of pessimism. There wasn't any leader given any lead anywhere. And uh, uh, plus the fact, of course, that uh, in the midst of uh, a capitalist uh, crisis of overproduction, nobody just knew what to do about it all. For many long years now, we've all done our best. And we sent out the coal to the north, south and west. We heard of the rumours that trouble was due. It has all come to pass now. Alas, they were true. Oh, farewell to your sunbeam. I know your roads well. Your work has been good, and your work has been hell. It's out of your high Spiky gates I will stroll. Fare you well to you, sunbeam. You're a dirty old hole. What the hell are you up to, Doig? Well, we believe that you've been sacking men for not observing the safety regulations. What do you call all this then, eh? Is this observing the safety regulations? Oh, Jesus, man. Now, I'm going to read to you a list of decisions made by the men. One. We do not work down the mine without adequate ventilation. Two, that a minimum rate of 14 shillings per shift be introduced. And three, we will not go down the mine with Sam King. Or any other comedy paid thief. I'll have you in court for that, Bill. Why? And how will you explain the missing skip tokens? You bastard. You, lock the mine. Right. Get back in your hole. Unused as I am to public speaking, I shall be brief and to the point. The notices of the 1st of September were an attempt to break the men and the union. The men would go out and the mine owners could employ anyone. Well, yesterday, even the scabs couldn't take any more and they went on strike until their grievances were heard. You're a liar! <laughs> even if you are Edward Birch, you'll behave yourself or get out, like anyone else. I think it only fair to warn those noisy shopkeepers and businessmen down the back that we're taking note of anyone who heckles or speaks out of turn. We have formed a Corumburra Miners Women's Auxiliary 
who have unanimously pledged their support and backing of the men in their struggle for a living wage and better conditions, which is the right of all working people.